the Lord is beside us With Him we cannot lose Though the shadow surrounds us We will fear no evil We trust, we trust in the Lord With our hearts and in your joy We will dwell forever Come on, go the night Go the night race you wear it Joy is coming, joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. Oh, praise, oh, praise to King Jesus. Some no joy, I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Come on. Hey. hey, everybody sing. We will not, we will not be shaken. We will not be moved. We will not be moved. The Lord is beside us. For the Lord is beside us. With Him we cannot lose. With Him we cannot lose. Hey, though the shadow, though the shadow surrounds us, we will fear no evil. We will fear no evil. We trust. We trust in the Lord with our hearts and in Your joy. We will dwell forever. Hey, here we go. Though the night may seem weary. Joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. All praise, all praise to King Jesus. Sun, no joy, I know joy is coming. Though the night, though the night may seem weary, joy is coming. Joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. All praise, all praise to King Jesus. Yes, I know joy, I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Everybody clap your hands, everybody clap your hands now. Hey. Listen, your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy to light. We won't submit to sorrow, our joy is coming in the morning. Hey, yeah, in the morning. See your light. Your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy to light. We won't submit to sorrow. Our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning. Hey, in the morning. See your light. Your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy to light. We won't submit to sorrow. Our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning, in the morning, in the morning. Your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy. We want to miss, we want to miss the sun. Our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning, in the morning, in the morning. Though the night, though the night may seem weary, joy is coming. Joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. All oh, praise, all oh, praise to King Jesus. I know joy, I know joy is coming. Though the night, though the night may seem weary, hey, joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. All praise to, all praise to King Jesus. I know joy, I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy to light. We want some need to sorrow. Our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning. Hey, in the morning. See your light. Your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy light. We want some need to sorrow. Our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy to light. We want some need to sorrow. Our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning, in the morning, in the morning. Your light can drown our darkness. Your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy to light. We want some need. We want some need to sorrow. Our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning, in the morning, in the morning. Joy is coming, 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 coming in the morning. 
is coming, coming, coming in the morning. Oh, praise, praise to King Jesus, Jesus. Cause I know joy. I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Hallelujah. We shout in this room. We praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We know your joy is here, God. We lift you high. What it will be tomorrow when I see the victory.
Jesus. Call on your name, God. No chain, no division, here we are, wide open for you, no one higher, no one greater, here we are, oh Savior, come move, come move, cause you make us strong. This is our God. You start a fire. Your furnace is captain. You rescued our hearts. Jesus, our victory. How great you are. You take your name. You make a mile with nothing but ashes. You start a fire. You found us as captives. You rescued our hearts. Jesus, our victory. How great you are. You make us stronger. Come on, church, let's declare. You win every battle. God, win.
you make us stronger. Your strength.
Jesus, this song is forevermore. A thousand hallelujahs, a thousand more. Oh, a thousand more. Come on, church, just a few more seconds. Begin to lift your praise. He is so worthy. He is so worthy. You deserve my praise. You deserve my glory, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, that in this time, Lord, that no one is here by accident, Father, that you have ordained every person to experience the fullness of your presence this morning. We thank you that you are here. Church, in this time, as you um, came in, you would have received your um, communion elements. If you don't mind at this moment, just taking a hold of those we're about to take part in communion I'm just going to give you a second to grab those thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you for your sweet presence here God thank you Jesus Father we thank you for this time we thank you for the opportunity that we get to partake in communion this morning church um, on the night that Jesus was betrayed as he sat around with his disciples, he took the bread, the Bible says, he gave thanks and he, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this bread represents my body broken for you. So why don't we take of the bread this morning? Thank you. 
see that you have made a way, Father, that these are not just words that we sing to a nice tune, Father, but these are words that carry power. These are words that carry truth. And your word says that it is the truth that will set us free this morning. So we walk in that freedom, church. We don't walk or live in condemnation, but we walk in that freedom this morning. So church, why don't we just receive, just take this moment to receive that freedom, receive that wholeness and say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your sacrifice. We love you, Jesus. So Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you that you say, do this in remembrance of me. Thank you that you have reminded us to do this, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is here in this place, that is moving, that is working, that is creating the best possible atmosphere so that your seed would fall on fertile soil. We thank you, Jesus, and we praise you for all these things. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. This morning, church, on your way down, why don't you just high five the person next to you? Say, Welcome, welcome. You are looking amazing this morning. What an awesome time in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Woohoo! I love being in the house of the Lord. Well, church, if you are new here for the first time, we just want to say, Welcome, welcome, welcome. We hope that you're already feel welcome this morning. Um, I just want to see, just by show of hands, if you are here for the first time, we're not going to make you come up and do a dance for us. <laughs> just, <aww. laughs> um, just lift your hands so that we can acknowledge you, that we can love on you. We are so thankful that you have come. And we pray that this is an awesome encounter for you. Well, if you are new, we, we'd love to get to know you. We want to encourage you straight after this encounter. Um, to just uh, head on over to our welcome desk. There are some lovely people who would love to get to know you better. Um, You're going to receive a welcome card if you wouldn't mind just filling that in. Of course, we have delicious tea and coffee there as well, complimentary. So we would love to get to know you. Um, Church, we'd also uh, just encourage you to hold on to your communion um, elements. Uh, At the end of the encounter, there'll be baskets that you can pop it into. Um, Yes. (laughs) So, woohoo! I'm so excited because... It is time to give church. It is time for the offering. Woo-hoo! So I'm sure by now you all know that I'm a teacher. And um, one of my favorite things I love about teaching, it's going to sound weird, but it's the crazy excuses that I get from the students. It's always so creative. And I love that it's always when it's assessment time um, that these wonderful creative uh, excuses come. <laughs> And um, so I remember getting, um, it was um, assessment week, and I remember getting an email from one of um, the student's parents, we'll call her Sally today, (laughs) and um, so I got an email from Sally's mom, and and, and it said, Dear Miss Swatboy, um, Sally is not going to make it to school this week, she's not feeling well. So I'm not saying she wasn't feeling well, I just love to, I I just love and notice the the correlation between assessment week and um, absenteeism. So um, (laughs) so she's she said she's not going to make it. I said, no, that's cool. I hope she feels better. So I see her on the Monday. And I go to Sally and I say, welcome, Sally. I'm so glad that you're back. How are you feeling? And she looked at me with a kind of puzzled look. Like I had to remind her she was absent. <laughs> and I was like, Sally, remember last week you went to school? And she's like, oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I said, how are you, how are you feeling? Are you, are you feeling better? She says, yes, yes, yes. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, okay, that's great. What, what was wrong? And I kid you not, this was her response. Well, I don't know. What did the email say? <laughs> what did the email say? Now, as much as I don't uh, appreciate the, the lack of preparation, what I do love and appreciate about Sally is that she had so much confidence that her mother was going to sort it out. She had so much confidence that even though she didn't prepare, she didn't do what she was supposed to do. She had confidence that mom's going to sort it out. She's going to pop Miss Swapboy an email and everything is going to be A-OK. So much so that she didn't even bother to communicate with her to find out what the excuse was. I love that kind of faith. And it got me thinking about our finances. Do you know, do we, do we have that kind of faith when it comes to our finances? 
or do we try to sort it out? Do we try to make a plan, especially in the months where, and you know, it happens to the best of us, you know, we kind of overspend that month. We're a little bit irresponsible that month. We, we didn't really prepare that month so much. And so now we want to play catch up. We don't want to trust God. We want to play catch up or we want to make the books balance. So I'm actually going to take a little bit out of the tithe or I'm going to take a little bit out of my generosity just to make the books balance again because I kind of overspent when I wasn't supposed to overspend. Or maybe, that, I don't know if that's just, I don't know if that's just me or maybe everybody, I don't know. <laughs> but um, sometimes that's what we do. We want to take away from our generosity. But I love what God says. God says, you know what? In all circumstances, at all times, I can actually make all grace and provision and abundance a abound to you. That means even in the times where we don't prepare, even in the times where we're a little bit reckless with our finances, God can still make all grace abound to us if we still remain generous. I love what it says in 1 Corinthians um, 9 verse 8. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound to us. All grace abound to us. Amen. How amazing is that? And it says that, um, in, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, we may abound in good works. So church, I want to encourage you. Let's not try to make a plan. Let's be like Sally, not in the lack of preparation, but let's be like Sally, that even in the months where we don't always do our best with our finances, Let's not take from God. Let's just make sure that we continue staying on God's word and trusting that God is going to make a plan in the same way that Sally trusted that her mother would make a plan. Let's trust that our father will make a plan for us as we continue to sow and be generous. Amen, church? Amen. Well, I want to say that there are so many ways that we can give here at City Life Church. Um, we have EFT, we've got banking details behind me. We have credit card facilities at our welcome desk. And of course, my favorites and left scan. So why don't you all stand? We're going to get ready to give. The band is going to come join me and we're going to continue to worship as we give. shaken we will not be moved for the Lord is beside us with him we cannot lose the shadow surrounds us we'll fear no we will fear no evil We'll trust in the Lord with our hearts singing your joy. We will dwell forever. Hey! Though the night may seem weary, hey! Joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. Oh, praise, oh, praise to King Jesus. Some new joy, I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved, we will not be moved, for the Lord is beside us, the Lord is beside us, with Him, with Him we cannot lose, though the shadows, the shadows surround us, we will fear no evil, we will fear no evil, hey, cause we trust, we'll trust in the Lord with our hearts. And in your joy, we will dwell forever. Hey! Though the night may seem weary, joy is coming, joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. All praise, all praise to King Jesus. Sun, no joy, and no joy is coming. Though the night, though the night may seem weary, hey! Joy is coming, coming, coming. Joy is coming. Hey, 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 hey. He's faithful. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody clap. 
your hands, everybody clap your hands now. Your light, your light can drown out darkness and bring out joy to light. We won't submit to sorrow, our joy is coming in the morning. Hey, in the morning. See your light, your light can drown out darkness and bring our joy to light. We won't submit to sorrow, our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning, in the morning. Your light, your light, your light can drown out darkness and bring our joy to light. We won't submit to sorrow, our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning. In in the morning, your light, hey, your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy to light. We won't submit to sorrow. Our joy is coming. In the morning, in the morning, in the morning, in the morning, overnight, overnight may seem weary. Come on, we sing out. Joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. Oh, praise to King Jesus, cause I know joy, I know joy is coming. Hey, though the night, though the night may seem weary, hey, joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. Oh, praise, oh, praise, oh, praise to King Jesus, cause I know joy, I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy to light. We won't submit to sorrow. Our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning, in the morning, in the morning. Your light, your light can drown our darkness and bring our joy to light. We won't submit to sorrow. Our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning, in the morning. We won't submit to sorrow, our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning, like comes, hey, in the morning, your light can drown our darkness, your light can drown our brightness, and bring our joy to life, we won't, we won't submit to sorrow, our joy is coming in the morning, in the morning, in the morning, in the morning, though the night we're at joy is coming, coming, coming in the morning. All oh, praise, all oh, praise to King Jesus. Cause I know joy, I know joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Hey, we praise you, Lord. Amen. Woo! Amen. Father, we thank you for these finances, Lord. We thank you for every generous sower. This morning, Lord, we thank you that your word says that you give seed to the sower. And we are thankful, Father, that we get to sow this morning. What a privilege it is to give back to you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that you would bless these finances. Use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, Father. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Church, why don't you take your seats? Woo! Well, church, I am excited to say that Right now, at this point of our encounter, we have our um, CLC anchors. So why don't we turn our attention to the screens? Here are our anchors. Hey, church. Welcome. It is so good to have you with us today. I just want to say, If you don't know what that's about, <laughs> well, listen up. We have exciting news. On the 26th of March, we have baby dedications on both locations. So if you want to dedicate your little ones to the Lord, go ahead and register at the welcome desk after the encounter or email info at citylifechurch.co.za. We see you there. That's right. Hey, church, and welcome. Our ongoing Joseph Project Food Pantry Drive is still happening, and we'd like to thank all of you who have generously contributed so far. Every contribution makes a difference. If you'd like to get involved, we're looking for non-perishable food items to help those in need. You can drop your food items off at any of our food pantry drop-off zones 
Every donation helps us help those in need. Absolutely. Well, church, if you didn't know, now you know. Kids ministry is the place to be. We have experienced such supernatural growth. And God is doing amazing things with our kids, which means that we need more volunteers across all of the age groups. So if you love kids, if you are looking to serve, or if you're a parent who just wants to get involved, please go ahead Go to the welcome desk after the encounter to register as a volunteer or just email info at citylifechurch.co.ca and Cass will get back to you ASAP. That's right. Our hosting team is also expanding and looking for more volunteers. They are an awesome part of every encounter. Yeah. So if you have a heart for people and want to get involved, you can sign up at the welcome desk after today's encounter or email info at citylifechurch.co.za and we cannot wait to serve with you. Hey everyone, so listen up, we have an exciting kids event coming up. Cass has got some more news. Hey City Life Church, this is a save the date for you to join us as a whole family. We have a family picnic coming up on the 1st of April. That's right, that's a Saturday and we cannot wait to see you. There will be more details to come next weekend. Your kids will also be getting flyers from City Kids. We have got so much planned and we can't wait for you to join us. Don't forget to save the date. We'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> That's right, church, and you don't want to miss out. Another thing you don't want to miss out is the next hike that is coming up at Kingscliff on the 25th of March. Stay tuned, we'll be sending out more information about that shortly. Well, church, that's all our church news for today. We hope you have an incredible encounter, a stronger Sunday, and we look forward to seeing you again next week with more church news. I'm so excited to be here. I've missed y'all. Come on. Come on. I've missed some of y'all. And uh, really, I want to encourage you. Church is the place to be. Church is where I walk into destiny. Come on. Oh, I feel like a rap. There's a, mm, there's a rap coming on. Come on. Check the phone on the microphone sensor. Come on. Oh, we're not going to go there. I, my, my sermon is too good to go on a tangent this morning. Come on. You know that the Word of God says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture, say all, all scripture is God breathed. I love that. And is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Some of us have been breathing what the world has to offer. God wants to remind you that He's His breath in our lungs, and we come alive when we activate the breath He's already placed in our lives. And so this morning, we're not reading from the Bhagavad Gita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Quran, or the U Magazine. No, we are basing today on the Holy Word of God, heaven and earth can pass away, but His Word will never pass away. Come on. It's time, church. We're growing stronger in our faith this year. We're going stronger in our relationship with God. That means we need the Word of God. Can I get an amen? And not just an amen, and then I'll see you next week, and that's the only word you get. Come on. You see, if you're having some relationship issues, I want to encourage you. The Word of God comes rushing to your aid. Maybe today you're, you're, you're battling with infertility. Then I want to encourage you to read Abraham and Sarah and how they navigated the promise, which despite it feeling like it was late, was not late, but came at the perfect time. Can I get an amen? If this morning you're, str you're struggling with just life, you're struggling with life giving you hard knocks, it's the school of hard knocks, well, I want to encourage you to pick up the book of Job. There is a story in there that's going to help you. If you're a believer today and you find that you're always attracted to the wrong people, come on, the people outside of church, the people outside of your faith, then I want to encourage you to read the story of Samson and Delilah. Come on, if you're married here today and you find that you're fighting more than you're getting on, I want to encourage you that you have have a divine relationship with a uh, mandate upon it. In this church, we believe that marriage is a mandate from heaven. And I would enc encourage you to read the story of Priscilla and Aquila in the New Testament. That's going to come and help you in your marriage. Come on. Well, today I want to speak into a specific kind of theme because this year we're going stronger. And while today I'm speaking stronger in relationships, 
I don't want you just to see my message from a place of marriage. I want you to see it as how I interact with everyone. If you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling like you don't have people in your life, maybe today's word will come rushing to your aid. And so today, I've entitled my message, I've done a whole youtube look and feel, come on, I snapped in a chat because of a filter, that's my message today, come on, I snapped in a chat, and that is clickbait right there, because I know, I've been watching YouTube, it's like this, oh wow, what is this, what's going on here kind of thing, well I thought I would be hip, cool, lit, and all those things in one, I snapped in a chat because of a filter, come on. How many of you all ever been on Facebook Marketplace? We got any bargain shoppers uh, here in the room today by show of hands? Come on. I see those hands. Come on. Facebook Marketplace. Well, for those of you who know me, know that I enjoy glasses and glasses are expensive, man. So I often go on a Facebook Marketplace and I'm always looking for a cool pair of glasses that I can maybe get prescription, cheap prescription lenses for at a later time and uh, basically looking for a bargain. And I came across the these awesome shades. Let me show you what I got a little while ago. These are cool. These are the, the they're, they're vintage Ray-Ban. They're Bosch and Loam, man. Come on. How old school is that? And they like, they like got this cool yellow kind of color. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Mm. Come on, come on. And I kind of was like, got these glasses, got them prescription made. What I love about you, you're all looking yellow right now. What I love about these glasses is that when you're wearing them, you can walk anywhere. And the amazing thing, especially in cloudy weather, which is Joburg's new norm, please help us, Jesus, is that it just kind of makes everything so well-defined. And I love them. And, and so because they're prescription, you get to the point after a few hours and a few days that you forget that you're wearing them. You walk into a mall. I don't need to change my glasses. They're not so dimmed that I cannot see. And so you kind of get used to wearing them. But what I noticed was that while I was wearing them, I'm so used to traffic lights not working, that we came across a working traffic light, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, come on, the one working traffic light in Joburg, and I was wearing these, and I said to Pastor B in the car, gee, I've noticed that they are replacing the green light for go with this amazing aqua blue. And I don't know, I don't want to push my, push my wife under the bus here. And she just nodded and agreed. Like, that's typically what I would do as the man in the house anyway. And she's, yes, honey, you know. And I'm kind of like, that's amazing. They're putting these new blue LEDs. So blue means go. I wonder if they're changing the whole K53. And so like a carrying on, eventually I come to the point where we're doing inserts for anchors. <coughs> And I wanted to do an advert for something, and it was last minute, and so I got my, my phone out, my camera, our, our little uh, microphone, some lighting, and as I'm starting to film, I'm looking at the screen on my phone, I'm thinking, there is something wrong with my iPhone. There's, the footage is yellow, and I'm looking, and the light setting, I turn it to white, white light filter, and I'm like, these lights are yellow. We've been ripped off. How long? We've had them for 13 months. That means they are one month outside of warranty. It was a scam. Come on. And I'm getting so frustrated and I'm looking at the footage, looking at the light, not realizing that actually Pastor B, when I got home, she said, have you seen yourself? And I'm like, is there something wrong? Have I got like a bat in the cave? Did I film with something on my face? You know what I'm saying? And she go look in the mirror. And I looked in the mirror and I suddenly realized I am wearing these yellow filter glasses. I want to say to you today that for so many of us in the room that, and I want to say for all of us, let's call a spade a spade. Every single one of us have filters in which we see our relationships. Now, the thing about a filter, I want to discuss purely five filters today. I'm sure there's a lot more, but I want to discuss them in light of who we are, where we're at, and what it means this year to be stronger in our relationships. And so the first filter that I want to speak into today is the insecurity filter, the insecurity filter. And I think for a lot of us, I'd say at least 80% of the room, uh, that 80% probably battle with insecurity. 
Now, when you look at life through the insecurity filter, the problem with that is that the filter doesn't just affect the way you see other people, but it actually affects the way that you see yourself. I'll give you an example. I had a a young guy um, in a youth group many years ago. He came to me and said, Pastor, I've just started dating this girl. She doesn't come to our church. Amazing girl, but I'm not too sure. I'd love you to meet her. And so I met this girl and and got chatting, and and she just loves the Lord. That is a A1 thumbs up part of of any relationship. She loves the Lord. She was singing in her worship team. Um, She was like full on for God, loved the Lord, knew that he sits above any other relationship. Can I get an amen? And I went back to this guy and I said to him, like, I don't understand. This girl is amazing. Like, uh, unless the Lord's told you differently. And he goes, yeah, no, you know what? I just, I, I feel she's too tall. And I said to him, well, she is tall, that's sure, but she wasn't wearing any high heels. She was like a normal height and whatever else and kind of chatting around until I realized when he stood up that the issue wasn't with the girl being tall was the fact that he was short. And it's so interesting how so many of us find a fault in an area no one else can see because it highlights an insecurity that we carry in our lives. I met a couple where the wife was incredibly successful and they said, Pastor, we need to arrange some counseling. We need to go for marriage counseling. This isn't working out. My wife's always at work. She's always in a meeting. As you know, she's always busy. She's in the corporate. She's just got promoted. It's just not working out. But what actually was happening is that this wife was still managing her home, managing her kids, managing her family very well. But the problem was not with her. It highlighted an insecurity in him that he felt he had to be the main breadwinner in the home. And because his income was less than hers, he was projecting that her success was the problem. Meanwhile, it was his own problem based on a stereo type that he'd been raised with in his own home. You see, the reality is confidence doesn't come from a self-help program. I think in the church in 2023, we need to realize that we need to stop trying to make God our self-help, apply a principle and forget the Savior out of the picture. The way we overcome insecurities is by placing the attention on the one that is more than enough. The one who has, the one who lifts us, the one who promotes us. In this church, if someone's not eloquent in speaking, does not mean they cannot preach. Hello. Because the anointing of God placed upon that person can move a room because they're not looking at their insecurity. They're looking to the Lord. This is not in 2023 the gospel of self-help. It's the gospel of Jesus that declares, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I want to encourage you in rough times, what word are you standing on? Do you know where the scripture comes from or is it just repeat, repeat from what you've heard? God's asking you today, this week, it's a prophetic word for this location. Would you find a verse? Would you memorize it? Would you memorize the location? And would you begin to stand on it? Remind the Lord of his word and watch the miracle God will do. Too many of you are standing on the shoulders of an auntie praying, a prayer team praying, which is all good for prayer but God's asking you to be stronger this year. Would you stand on a word for yourself this year? Can I get an amen? Amen. See, the moment I remove God, of course I'm gonna be insecure. The moment you remove God from the equation, the moment you remove God from culture, suddenly identity gets placed on what I think I am and not who God says that I am. Is that not why we have an identity issue in 2023? People identifying as a cat or a this or a that, hello. It's time in this season that we look to the Lord who will affirm that which he has made you and designed you to be. Can I get an amen today? See, the deeper reason so often that we see life and our relationships through an insecurity 
filter is because so often, no one in this room, we place God-like expectations on someone else. And when they let us down, you see, I shouldn't have trusted them. We are living in a world with fallen people. You can trust someone who is imperfect. We place God-like expectations on pastors, on people in the ministry, someone that's hurt you. Come on, let me help you. Humans will let you down, but God will never let you down. Can I get an amen? The second filter today when it comes to relationships, don't just think marriage, think all relationships. Number two is the distrust filter. The distrust filter. In Genesis 3, verse 1 to 5, we're going to read this together. It says this, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the other wild the Lord had made. He said to the Woman, did God really say you must not from any in the? I love that passage because it highlights the strategy of the enemy. It's very hard for the enemy to be the enemy when it's in black and white in scripture. Come on. Did God really say? The enemy will always make you question what God actually said. It'll make you want to twist it, turn it, manipulate it. Verse 2, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the trees of the garden. Fruit, you got it. But God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree in the, of the, and you must not, or you will. You see, I want to show you something from this passage. The serpent does not lie, but he deceives. There is a difference between lying and deception. And for a lot of us here today, we will spot a lie, but we won't see a deception. And that's how the world is operating right now. I just see it more and more. It's not a blatant lie, but it is a deception. And I want to tell you, deception can be even more powerful than a lie. In America, a man who looked like Dwayne The Rock Johnson went to a nightclub in Los Angeles and the owner of the club let him in for free, took him through to the VIP section, gave him free drinks for the evening until someone pointed out that Dwayne The Rock Johnson was on a trip to Europe to promote a new movie at which the owner of the nightclub club, furious with this man, took him out the VIP, took him out the club and said, never come back. How could you lie to us? And the man said, I never once said I was Dwayne the Rock Johnson. That is an example of deception. The devil works in degrees. The problem is what's one degree here, a kilometer down the line is suddenly 10 meters off the truth. Another kilometer down the line, 100 meters off the truth. And eventually you get to the point where you are so far from the truth, but so much water has gone under the bridge that you're not sure the deception from a lie. Verse four, you will certainly... Die, you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you, from it, your will be, and you will be like knowing good from. What is the enemy saying? He's saying in this passage, you can't trust God. So many times in our life, The experiences we go through at first, I'm not sure if I can trust God. Go through a week, God comes through, I can trust God. Later down the line, it's a month, I'm not sure if I can trust God. God comes through, you can trust God. Some of you, that time duration has increased and you're at a point where it's been months and you're now at a point of saying, I don't know if I can trust the Lord. Let me help you here. If he's done it, before he's gonna do it again if he's got you through it before God is not limited by circumstances God owns the cattle on a thousand hills he's the God of miracle there is no thing that the Lord cannot do come on but so many of us we think we can't trust God when it comes to relationships if I trust the Lord for a man in my life I'm gonna end up being a nun in Calcutta help me Jesus Single and alone, I don't know if I can trust the Lord. 
Pastor was praying one day and he heard the word India as he was praying over a Sunday service and the offering time and just a message that he was going to bring. Next thing he goes to the board of elders, said, listen, I'm resigning. Got on a plane, flew to India, was in Mumbai, suddenly trying to start a church. It was hard. Eventually the pastor was failing miserably, got depressed and said, Lord, but you have said India. And he said, yes, the offering that you were praying about was to send an offering to India. Not once did I ask you to go to India. Come on. But so often we make our own path. We make our own route outside of the will of God. And then we get frustrated because frustrated God wasn't in the route that we made ourselves. Come on. It's time to say we can trust God. We can trust him. See, you got to ask that question. Who told you that? Did the Bible tell you that? Did people at church tell you that? Did other Christians tell you that? I want to tell you that God I know is not like that. So let's see. Let's go back a bit here. Let's see how this starts. Genesis 2 verse 15. It says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of to work it and take care of it. And the Lord, the man, you are, you are to eat of any tree in the garden. You are free. Some of us need to realize that God is a liberator. God is the perfect perception of freedom, and therefore what others call freedom may not align to what God says is true freedom. That's important. You're free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge. He says you must not. The knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will certainly die. Here's the commandment. You are free. See, the world wants to convince us that real freedom is, I'm allowed to do anything I want, whenever I want. That's what true freedom is. You're not free because you can't do what you want when you want. Come on. You see, the Bible, we need to understand what God is saying. The Bible is quite clear that I'm not free to smoke. I'm free from the need to smoke. Hello. I'm not free to have sex with anyone. I'm free from having to have sex with anybody. I'm not free to watch porn. I'm free in Christ from the addiction of porn. Come on. I'm not free to I'm free from because discipline is freedom. Restraint is freedom. Can I say it this way? A train is most free when it's on the tracks. Imagine next time you get on a train and there's no track. You ain't going nowhere. Sliding here, sliding there, going there, going there. No. When God brings freedom, he gives you some boundaries, not to take things from you, but to help you so that you don't go on the detour of addictions that will take you months, if not years, to get out of your life. Come on. You're not free to. You're free from the need to do those things. Hello. Hello. Which means God's definition of marriage is the definition which leads to freedom. God's definition of sex is the definition that leads to freedom. When the world's telling you, no, this is what freedom is. Come on. We realize today that we understand the nature of sin. At first, you start playing with sin, but eventually, sin will start playing you, and sin will become your puppet master, that you feel imprisoned, you feel guilty, you feel condemned, even as a born-again believer. Come on. Sin doesn't lead to freedom. Fact. Sin will never lead you to freedom. Well, I'm doing this sin. Look how free I am. Ah, there is an edge of a cliff coming. It will derail you. It will hold you back for years to come. It can implode on your relationships, on your job. Come on. Sin does not lead to freedom. See, all disobedience, every time we're disobedient to God, is actually a filter of distrust. For a lot of us, we don't have a disobedience issue. We have a distrust. We disbelieve God at his word that what he wants to do through us and for us will always be for our progress and our good. Come on. Let me get to the point. See, so often 
we need to realize that I don't always fully understand about what God says about marriage, about what God says about singleness, about what God says about relationships. But you know what, God? I'm going to trust you because I've seen it time and time again. Solomon saw this. Every major person in the scripture saw it, that what you are leading me to will always be for my good. So many of us go for the cultural narratives. We believe what Netflix says. I'm not saying don't watch Netflix. I'm saying have some filters from that which they're propagating through your television. We all need to chill. We all need to watch some stuff, right? Can God speak through media? Absolutely. But watch what media you're watching. Come on. See, the minute a train is going along a track and you go into a tunnel, you don't, at the point of the tunnel, throw away your ticket and jump off the train. No, you trust that the engineer is getting you to the other side. In life, when you're going through a tunnel moment, don't chuck out the word, jump off the train. Trust that God is guiding you through, and He will, say will, He will get you to the other side. Come on, my point number three. I've got to get moving here. Come on. The shame filter. The shame filter. Look for this in your relationships. People operating with a shame filter will always feel a vulnerability. God makes Adam and Eve, and the Bible says that they are naked and not ashamed. See, the goal of any relationship that you're in is that you're not hiding anything, that you're living a life unashamed. If you're married here today, I want to encourage you. Live a life unashamed, without a secret. Don't keep secrets from your best friends. Don't keep secrets from your spouse. Don't hold things back that when they find out, hello, that suddenly there is chaos in the relationship. I dealt with a, a couple many years ago who got married. Unfortunately, they're not married anymore. I did their premarital. That's why I don't do it anymore because they got divorced. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, they got married. And during the premarital, there were things of how many kids do you want? What influence does in-laws have in your, how often in a month are you seeing in-laws? Do they stay in proximity to you? How are you navigating money in your relationships, right? Are you going to have different accounts with different banks, same, uh, same bank, different accounts, one account that you share with one account, one bank with two different accounts that you both can access, hello. And suddenly they were discussing, no, it's all transparent, everything's good. They have this amazing, lavish wedding ceremony, only to find six months later that he had over a hundred thousand rands worth of debt that he had hidden from his spouse. I want to tell you, that is a blow. Because for the next however many years, your whole future has shifted and changed because someone who didn't know now has to bear the consequence of a relationship lie. I want to encourage you, be honest with this. If you have to keep secrets from someone, I want to say you're not mature enough to be in an intimate relationship with them. If you're married in this room, I want to encourage you, you do not do secrets. Come on. And so Adam and Eve, they eat of the fruit, the Bible says, and now their nakedness is a source of shame to them. And then God comes down and he says, Adam, where are you? Did God not know where Adam was? No, God knew exactly where Adam was. He was highlighting that shame had now become part of the picture. And Adam says, we hid because we were naked. See, sin is inevitable. We will all fall short of the glory of God. Something this week was sin before the Father. Every single one of us. Can all the real Christians say amen in this house? Can all the fake Christians leave? Come on. There is a process. Hello. We all fall short in some way. To not share Christ when you have an opportunity is sin, according to the Bible. I'm not just talking about dodgy things some of you all get up to. I'm just looking at some of you, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding, right? I'm saying at some point, we're on a process of sanctification. In other words, becoming more like the image of Christ. But if you think God is there waiting for you to fall, waiting for you to mess up, to catch you out, you will always run from God. But when you realize that we have a God in heaven who covers your shortcoming, 
Even though you didn't study for the exam, you still somehow by a miracle passed the exam because God brought that which you hadn't studied to remembrance somehow and you made it through. That is the grace of God. Nothing we can do, right? We can't stand here trying to bend God's arm to have a revival break up or something, something break out in this room. No, all we come here to do in our brokenness, in our frailty is say, God, come and move, God. God, we're hungering for you. God will always move in hunger. In this church, I love this church because there is always hunger in the room. It doesn't matter where you're at right now, but if there is hunger, a miracle can happen. Come on. If you think God is a killjoy, if you think God is evil against you, petty, they're always there to catch you out, you're always going to run from God. I want to encourage you. If you're struggling with the shame filter, I want to encourage you, come to God. He will help you navigate it. In your relationships, it's not time that every time a spouse or every time a friend is around, suddenly you're clearing your web browsing history. Hello? Hello? Or you're hiding, let me bring this real to home in this crowd. Or you're hiding take-a-lot boxes in the back of your car. Come on. Daily special. (laughs) Was 1,099 rand, now 1,089 rand. What a bargain, come on. And suddenly you're hiding things. Listen, in your relationships, I want to challenge you. Give the person that you're married to the opportunity to choose you even when they know everything about you. Be vulnerable, be honest. With Pastor Bianca and I, we're honest, we're vulnerable, and that is what keeps everything moving forward because we can trust one another. When you can trust one another and when you trust God, there is nothing that you cannot do in a relationship. Point number four, come on, the trauma filter. The only thing traumatic that Adam has ever known, have you ever thought of this? The only traumatic thing that Adam has ever known is loneliness. Before he had Eve, God walked with him in the cool of the day. The rest of the day, he was alone. The temptation to Adam is very different to the temptation of Eve. See, Eve, the serpent's very clever because he comes to tempt Eve. Eve to not trust God and eat the fruit. Watch this. Adam was standing all there, right there all the time. When the devil was tempting Eve, Adam was standing right there. Come on. Very clever, right? But you see, for Adam, the concern was loneliness. The concern was what it would be like to be without Eve. Every married person in this room, you should know what the enemy is saying to your spouse. Hello. If you're married in this room, I want to encourage you. Know the three deceptions that the enemy is always telling you, telling your spouse. That you cannot, you're not there to fix them, but to echo the truth of God to them. I'm not good enough. No. You know what? You could do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Whatever those vulnerabilities, whatever those sensitivities, you need to know how to combat the deception of the enemy. Come on, for Eve, she wants the fruit, but for Adam, he doesn't want to be alone again. He can say, I can either tell on you, Eve, hey God, hello, she ate of the fruit, get me out of here. But the trauma of loneliness that he would rather be with Eve in her sin than be alone again and obey God. Wow. See, a lot of relationships that we come across, people say they're in love. I want to say they're not in love. They're just trauma bound. <laughs> you think you're in love. Come on. The issue is not that you're in love. The problem is that person kind of gets you, right? It means that, you know what, I would rather be in a relationship with someone who kind of gets me than be out of a relationship and have to start this whole process all again. See, sometimes God needs to bring people into your life that will challenge you and not just make you feel good about your present dysfunction. A real marriage means that we challenge our spouse in love, not with threats, not with condemnation, but in terms of upping the skills and the talents that you as a spouse have identified in their lives. 
and saying, you're so good at this. I love the way you do that. Have you thought of studying this to develop that in you? Isn't that incredible? Imagine your spouse started doing that. Come on. No one in this room because you've all got amazing spouses and everybody said, come on. See, all humanity's, all sinners is humanity's desire to self-soothe sin. Pain. All sin is, is humanity's desire to self-soothe pain. When you feel pain, so often sin is what you go to. I believe that in any room, there are people that are serial daters that go from relationship to relationship. I had a young guy in a church who, who joined our youth group and suddenly he was dating all the girls and he was just leaving a trail of destruction. And that Friday night, I said, all the leaders are saying, Get, kick him out of the youth, you know, speak on dating and how to, how to date as a Christian. And I went before the father and the father said, I want you to preach on the father heart of God. And I spoke about a heavenly father. And I spoke about it not being reflection of an earthly father that was abusive or an absent father who wasn't there. Or a righteous father who acted like a believer in certain environments but treated you like rubbish in the home when it was just you. And I began to minister. And I want to tell you at the altar call, that young guy came forward weeping. God did a deep healing in his life. And in that moment, I want to tell you today, not only is he living a successful marriage, they got two kids there. They are blessed to the Lord. They're still serving the Lord because God did a miracle in that moment. Will you allow people, when you have a distrust, when you've been hurt, when you've been vulnerable, would you allow a believer to come alongside you and begin to speak life, to begin to be vulnerable, that they can take you to your next step in your life with the Lord? Come on. My final filter, I'm going to end with this. It's going to go quickly, don't worry. The sacrifice filter. Some of these are anal, I know. This is not a rah, rah, amen, hallelujah, but it's good. Come on. Is it good this morning? Come on. The sacrifice filter. You see, Adam had a choice. First option, um, Lord, get her. She's sinning, Lord. Get her. Get her out of here, Lord. Come on. Option two, he could join her in her sin. But what he also could have done is... He could have sacrificed for her. He could have taken his life for her because in the Old Testament, it was a, the shedding of blood which covered sin. But the Bible tells us what the first Adam failed to do, the second Adam succeeded in doing. That is what Jesus did. Jesus says, your sin is not my problem, but I'm taking it on as my responsibility. I'm going to get you through this. Stop running from me with your filters, with your shades, with the way you're seeing life, but run to to me because together we're getting past this. I will take you and I am that I am. If you would look to me, even your vulnerabilities, even your weaknesses will become strengths because of the way that I anoint you and use you in the path ahead. Come on. If I'm going to be in a relationship, I've got to die to some things. You know what a wedding is? <laughs> I love this because I do weddings often and I say to the couple, your wedding day is two funerals and a wedding. And they say, no one in our family died, Pastor. And I'm saying, no, no, no. You're dying to your own way of living. If you want to be in a healthy relationship, it's not two halves coming together to make one. No, it's two whole broken, dysfunctional people that are saying, I'm going to die to my own needs and I'm going to live for the needs of the one that I love. Isn't that what Christ did for you? Hello. If you're going to be in a relationship, you've got to sacrifice. You've got to be wrong, guys. You've got to be wrong. Help me, Jesus. You've got to be wrong sometime. Even when in the heart of hearts, you know that you're right. Is she squeezing your leg, bumping you in your ribs, <laughs> giving you an, a wink right now? Come on. You can be right or you can be happy, gents. Come on. Sometimes marriage is even when on small things you're so convinced, let it go for the sanctity and safety of the one that you're giving your life for, your spouse. Hello. Sacrifice. Here's the point that I want to make today. Come on. When you look at this, what, what, was, what was the issue with this tree? Have you ever asked that? 
What makes the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the issue in the whole fall? Have you ever asked the question? I know I've asked it. No one here today. That's fine. What was the sin in Eve eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Have you asked yourself that? Do you want to know what it is? Should I tell you next week? Okay, all right, cool. You see, before they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they did not have a knowledge of what was good and what was evil. They had to ask the Lord on everything. God, is this good or is this evil? God, is this good or is this evil? In other words, to this point, they were dependent on God's perspective for everything they came into contact with. Isn't it like humans to say, I don't want to trust God as to whether this is good or evil. I'm going to eat of the tree of the knowledge and I will empower myself outside. Isn't that what self-help is? A short deception that leads you down a tricky road of being independent of God. I know better. I don't want to bug God. He's a busy man. I want to challenge you all today. Can you in your life put back the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Can you come before your father again and saying, Lord, culture and society are moving in a rapid rate in the wrong direction. And Father, rather than me making the decision, is this good or is this evil? Can I increase my relationship with you? Can I increase my dependency on you as it was with Adam before the fall? That God, I can come to you. That's why what's sin for you may not be sin for someone else. Because God has a unique journey for you. Hello. Watching six hours of TV in a go can be a sin for someone else because it's stopping them in their relationship with God. They're in a different place, a different level of maturity. It may be not be a sin for you, but it's about a dependency on God, on His voice, on the Holy Spirit to say, Lord, lead me. In my place of work, should I do this? When there's injustice, when they're taking prepaid commission slash bribes, do I speak up here? Or God, is there a bigger thing that you're developing? Or God, is this a prayer point that you're going to resolve without my intervention? Can we stop trying to be God in our lives and begin to bring the King of glory back in, to trust Him, to say, God, you lead me, you guide me, you're the one I'm looking to. Lord, where even my life is broken, you're the one who will remember me. You'll put things back together. You'll put me on the right track. Rather one day in your courts than a thousand days elsewhere because when I'm in your presence you make things that could have taken me a thousand days easy you connect me with people of influence that I am connected with people that promote me give me a job that when there's a ceiling in my place of work you don't have to move people out of the way perhaps you're moving me sideways to move me upwards hello that we can begin to depend on our God. Won't you stand with us, church, in this place this morning? Father, we come before you, and Lord, we don't want to be eating of the tree of good and evil. We don't want to leave things to our own devices. We don't want to leave relationships to our own devices. Lord, so many filters, so many filters in our lives. Distrust, insecurity, shame, disobedience, sacrifice. Father, in this house today, Lord, we want to be dependent on you, Lord. Looking unto Jesus, the author. You write good books. <laughs> write a good book of my life. It's an adventure book. <laughs> you were off track. It was like Indiana Jones. There were things, the enemy was shooting fiery darts, but he got you through it. It's a romance book. <laughs> gave you a beautiful spouse and your marriage is thriving and even when you go through rocky times God brings you closer together and he gets you through it it's a comedy sometimes you just got to sit back and laugh at the attempt of the enemy who was using something so minuscule and irrelevant why did I nearly even fall for that ha I laugh in the face of the devil come on he's the author and he's the finisher of your faith 
today, church, I hope that I've inspired you to take some glasses off, to take off some filters, to ask the question, rather than reacting in a relationship, am I seeing this through a filter that the Lord needs to remove? Father, over every marriage represented here today, I speak life, remember, restore, For every person that's battled in friendships with people that have betrayed you or a best friend that's gone AWOL, Lord, would you bring them back to you, we ask in Jesus' name. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, what are you waiting for? He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He loves you so much. He gave his life just for you today. That whoever believes in him, shall have the promise of an eternal life as well as an abundant life this side of eternity. And this morning, I believe God's knocking at the door of hearts in this room. Would you invite Him in? Would your plans and purposes that He put in the fabric of your DNA will come to life when you're in relationship with Him? And so today, with every eye closed and every head bowed, if today you want to invite Jesus into your life for the first time, or today you're inviting Him for the first time in a long time, I want you to slip your hand up right now in this house. Come on. If that's you, just slip your hand up. Come on, I'm choosing Jesus today. He's got a plan for you. God bless you. Fantastic. We're going to pray this prayer together. If you raised your hand in this house, I want you to pray it with all of your heart. Say this, Lord Jesus. I come before you today and I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. I choose you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my past mistakes and make me new. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, can we give those people a round of applause? Come on.